Fiora. Shulk. She's... Get it together, Shulk. <sighs> we ain't got time to be hanging around here. I don't know what's happened to her, but that was Fiora. No doubt about it. You know what that means? She ain't dead. We gotta get her back. Get her back. Right. We've come too far to give up now. Then we'll go to Mekonis and find Fiora. Just beyond there lies Sword Valley. The Mekon flew in the direction of Galahad Fortress. Fiora may be there. Will you pursue, Shulk? Yes. We will get Fiora back. We go to Sword Valley. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we reached the base of Valak Mountain and had our fourth encounter with Metal Face. Afterward, we met Egil, leader of Makanis, who invited us to go onward to Sword Valley. This time, with the path open in front of us, we will indeed be going onward, but before we step through, there are a few things that I want to take care of. Now, no side quests, just this first thing is something that some of you informed me of down in the comments that I was not aware of myself. And I want to take care of it now because I don't think we have all that much more time to go do it before we become unable to do it ever. So I'm going to go into my area maps, and by the way, you want to discover the Bionis Wrist. Trust me on that. Um, that is a skip travel location. The last one that we discovered was Nawful Tower, and quite frankly, it would be an awful thing if you had to walk back there. So let's go to Alchemoth, because that's where I want to go to show the thing and the stuff. Should you go to the audience chamber, there's something here for you. This will open up after Melia joins you post-Prison Island, but I believe we don't have all that much more time left before this can no longer be done. Let's talk to Laura Theon. Wow, even she's taller than Shulk. The anti mechon response meeting shall be held shortly. There, the Ministry of Research will announce its findings. <laughs> it's am it is amazing to think we could retrieve such a thing. Nothing, just speaking to myself. Don't forget, be careful. Laura Thea, your character design is so wacky. I mean, there's no secret that the character designs in this game are great, though, but Laura Thea's is so crazy and all over the place. It's just so wacky. Let's talk to Callian. Forgive me, but may I please speak to my sister? I have something that I wish to give to her. My apologies. Please excuse us. After switching to Melia, we can have this conversation with Callian alone. Melia, this is the keepsake from Father. Please take it. Father would have wanted to fight beside you in battle. Please keep him close by you. I have placed a great burden upon you. Please forgive my failings as an elder brother, but keep this with you always. Not only father, but I too will be by your side. Do not forget this and stay safe on your journey. Please take it, crown princess. We obtain the Imperial Staff. Should we go to equip this? We can see that it's a pretty good three slot weapon for Melia, so you bet I want to equip this, but not only that, should we actually look at it, you can see that it is indeed Saurian Antiqua's Imperial Staff. In fact, if Melia will fully extend it, it is the very one that he took to Prison Island. And in fact, should you look beyond the throne, you can see that it is no longer here. So nice little detail there for you. Let me just decide what I want to equip this with. I'll give her three electric plus three gems. This will give a 75% buff to electric damage. What does that include? Well, not only Summon Bolt, but also Mind Blast. So you bet I want that. All that done, though, that's the only thing I wanted to take care of here in Alchemoth. Let's head back to Valak Mountain. As with any area that we're finishing, oh, thank God I have all of them. Okay, I want to do the Collectopedia for Valak Mountain, of course, because we're at the end of the area. The reason why I'm reacting so strongly to having all the items is because Valak Mountain's Collectopedia sucks. There are, like, no trades for any of these items. There are so many of them. There's always those stubborn items that you just can't find. And to top it off, the few items that you actually can trade for are brutal. It's just like, get five stars with Upper Bionis to be able to get this. Uh, there we got an Aura Heal 2 gem. That'll make it so that you recover a little bit of health over time while you have an Aura up. That can be really useful for certain characters. I don't know if I really want to equip that right now, though, but I might. Uh, we'll do that. And uh, by completing this area, we complete, or we get, the Ceres' Cutlass for Dunban. So I think I want to equip that as well. I'm just equipping a lot of things here. In fact, actually, before we do that... I want to go into arts. I've had some people shouting at me for having multiple auras on Dunban. Um, largely it's been to show off new arts and I just haven't been switching them off though, but I personally like having both Spirit Breath and um, Serene um, Heart on him at the same time, because I like both of those auras for different reasons, and when one runs out I can just use the other. I know that auras don't stack, 
But I'm thinking of... Oh, God. I don't really want Jaws of Death, personally. Like, I just don't really need it. Um, I probably will put Serene Heart back on, but one art that I really should be using more is Soaring Tempest. I think I'll get rid of Tempest Kick for that. That will in that will make it so that he gets 10% talent gauge increase every hit, and it actually hits within an area. It's Dunban's only art that hits within an area, other than, I guess, Thunder, technically. Um, but yeah, it is actually a really good art. In fact, should you equip that and have Heat Haze in effect as well... Dunban can raise the party gauge just insanely fast, just because he has a high critical hit chance, he'll be hitting multiple times, and he'll be boosting his talent gauge while doing so. It is really a good combination that you might want to consider. I'm not going to personally be using it, but I did want to make note of what a good combination of arts that actually is. Now, I think I do want to give him that new weapon. Indeed, it is stronger offensively, has a higher critical hit chance. It's only got two slots, but I'm going to go for it. As per usual, you know me, I love my double attack gems. So with that done, I want to go into the quest log and just kind of show what my quest log for Valak Mountain actually looks like for those that are playing along. There's what it's looking like. I just want you to remember bad timing because there are more quests open up from completing that after you have saved all the Nopon researchers and sent them back to the Nopon camp. But we're not going to be taking care of that right now. We will be visiting Valak Mountain again in the future. So how about we go on? Oh god, I didn't realize how slow Melia was. Uh, well, not Melia though, but just no quick step gems was. So uh, let's switch back over to Shulk and... Let's answer that invitation and head on through the cave. The build up here is just the best. How the music fades out, how those drums start up. We have the snow melting, we're going into a desert area. And to think that all of this is just a thumb. This huge area is just a thumb. It's crazy. We've found a bitter melon. Seems kind of out of place here. But we step onward. Oh. <sighs> What the? He's all that big sword? Oh, if he's, then ouchie ouch! The sword of the Mekonis. The entire valley below. The whole thing is its sword. Something seems... unnatural. What do you mean? Look. That flowing light. From the way it glows. It has to be ether, but it looks like it's being drawn in by something. By the fortress. It should just be up ahead. Father once told me that the Mekonis absorbs the ether of the Bionis and uses it for sustenance. So the Mekonis feeds off ether? Then undoubtedly the ether serves as the Mekon's energy source as well. Yet another way that we might be food to them. Let's go onward. We have even more to go down this path. This is actually a pretty long, narrow area. It's a little bit different from what you typically see, but I guess we are kind of heading towards Sword Valley, so it does make sense. We have a meaty carrot. Uh, way to break the tension of all this built up there. These item names are just so ridiculous. Uh, what's this one going to be? Bitter Melon once again. As we step to our next destination, I only have one thing to say to you. Welcome to Makanis. It looks so big, even from this distance. The fortress must be enormous. Galahad Fortress, the frontline base of the Mekon. The Mekon that attack Bionis must all come from here. Then, there's a high probability that he's there. The golden Mekon that took Fiora. We're about to enter the Mekon stronghold. If. There's anyone who wants to turn back now. Shulk, friend should no split up. No leave friend behind. Ricky's scared, but Ricky won't go too. Ricky. He's right. Okay, let's go. Yes. Ricky. No, everyone here. I think is among the best of friends that you would ever want to have. It just... Uh, he's so good. I gotta wonder who put this wooden fence here, and in fact, should you look down there, you can see not only High Antia, but also Homs transport ships. What do you say we go down there and see exactly what's up, because that's definitely not what you would have expected to see here. What's that? A supply convoy. 
It would be most unwise to proceed without restocking our supplies. You arranged this for us. Hey, it's... Dixon! Looks like you lot have been having fun without me. Heard you took care of that faced Mekon. What are you doing here? I got wind of some allied force coming together a few days back. I stepped up as the representative of the Homs. Then a little birdie told me you lot were heading for Galahad Fortress. So I thought I'd drop by and say hello. I've got a whole stack of new equipment. Want some? Yeah! I was hoping for some new stuff. Hold it, Ryan. You know it's gonna cost you. You cheap old man. I'm still good to go. Dixon, let me get this straight. You have developed technology that enables any Homs to fight a mech on one on one and actually come out on top. They're not Monados, as they don't have Monado arts, but still, something that would be invaluable to any Homs would have been able to turn the tables in pretty much any battle. And you are going to charge us out the nose for this stuff, knowing that we're going in to fight tons of mech on. Dixon, you magnificent bastard. So, <laughs> needless to say, he lives up to his name of Dixon. These weapons are kind of interesting. Um, they are weaker than what we already have, so you might not want to equip them for that reason. They are all one-slot weapons as well. The only thing that I will say is do not buy this one. You see how expensive that is? I know it's the cheapest of them, though, but still. If you buy this, the only things that are actually going to be buffed to hurt Mechon are Melia's auto attacks and spear break. Yeah, her starlight kick is a topple attack, which that makes Mechon able to be hurt normally. And everything else that she has is ether based so yeah, don't waste your time on this. All the others, though... Can be helpful if you want to have everybody hurt Mechon normally without the need for a topple or an enchant or anything like that. Going on, though, we have the 8 cap. This has a recovery up 4 on it, um, so increases HP restored by 20%. That can be good if you want it, though, but it is kind of weak. Into well, actually, I don't know. It might be good for Rick. Well, he's got a lot of HP already. I don't know. I'd be losing out on a lot of health if I went for that, I think. So, yeah, I don't know if I want to really go for that. Uh, we have the infantry attire that does damage heal 4. It makes so that you have a chance, I believe. Yeah, 20% chance of recovering 70 HP after being attacked. Um, no. Sorry. I just don't really see that. Only a 20% chance of healing 70 HP. Sorry, I just don't see it as that worth it. These brave gloves definitely don't look bad. In fact, I think I will buy a set of these for everyone just because this looks really good. Man, Dixon is draining our pockets. Look at how low my money is now. Other than this, we just got heavy armor. And wow, I can't even afford this. Engineer Belt, uh, Earth Cloak 4. That makes it so that ground enemies have 40% lower radius of detecting you. Um, it's okay, I guess, if you want to sneak past enemies, because as you can bet, there are going to be lots of enemies ahead. Um, Brave Shoes, uh, yeah, I probably should go for this. Uh, wow, I can't even afford anymore. I'm going to sell stuff. Holy crap. Um, Alright, um, as for art books, I can't afford a single one. Okay. Uh, art books. We have a lot of assorted ones. Um, I don't want to pick any of these up. I already have Mind Blast. That's a repeat from earlier. But worth noting is that Melia has an art book called Reflection here. She does not have that art yet. Just a little bit of foreshadowing. So I'm going to equip myself and I'm going to sell a few things. Give me just a moment. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. As we walked up here, Dunban learned a new skill and I wanted to show what it was. Sustained Spirit extends the duration of auras. How fitting with all the talk of auras in this video. Now on to show the updated equipment. Here's how everyone's looking. Once again, Shulk has uh, quick step gems on him just because I'm going to be playing as him most of the time and I want everything to go along a little bit smoother. You've probably noticed that some characters, but not all, have anti-mech on weapons. The reason for this is that I have some issues with them and you do have other options than using them. I'll be getting into more what those are when we start doing some more fighting. Uh, we have some Earth Ether ge or, uh, gear right here. That's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, these things just have. These are what Ether deposits look like here, I guess. Um, let's see this Defense Force Soldier. Maconis crystals look different from Bionis ones. Did you know? The one next to me is like what you will find in Maconis. It might be, be it might be because the uh, Ether flow is different. Okay. Uh, what do you have to say? We have been busy building up the Allied Force. Even so, Dixon told us to come here to bring you supplies. He is probably worried about you all. Sure, personally, I think he just didn't have much confidence in us and wanted to take our money before we got killed by the Mechon, but that's just me. Come and see us when you need any supplies. Okay. With all those done, how about... Oh, wait, we got this guy over here. I wonder why he's just kind of standing over this way. Don't forget that everyone in the Allied Force is behind you. But don't go getting yourselves hurt. 
We need you to finish this thing once and for all. All right. Now, with all of them talked to, let's talk to Dixon. If you're all ready, let me know what you've been up to. Looks like you've been through a lot. Tell me about it. Let's tell Dixon what has happened. Fiora? You mean Dumban's sister? Yes. So that's why you're all looking so down. I can't believe they're sticking Homs into those faced Mekon. Looks like they weren't just eating us. They made Mumkar into one. He was the one who attacked Colony 9. Oh, and there was me thinking he snuffed it in that battle. Aren't you surprised? That he attacked Colony 9? I don't know what drives those mech on. I've given up trying to figure them out. It don't surprise me one bit. <laughs> Still, Munker as well, eh? Things are getting interesting. Sorry? Oh, nothing. It is time for us to return. I would like to continue providing assistance, but my help is required in assembling Homs for the Allied Force. There are also my duties as Seer to consider. Then I'll be off too. You lot should be alright getting Fiora back. In the meantime, we'll be getting ready for battle. Thanks for coming this far. We'll be fine. We can handle ourselves. Galahad Fortress is a key position for the Mekon. You can't just rush in, all guns blazing. Agreed. We will infiltrate via the Aether Inlets. If I'm right and the Mekon do feed off Aether, then we're sure to find some form of influx channel. Our objective is to reach one of those channels. Don't go dying on me, Shulk. I won't. You take care as well. Cheers. Looks like it's just us. Right. We head for the hilt of the sword. Galahad Fortress. Okay. One year on. Now, at last, we will seize our destiny. Isn't that right, Shulk? So another has appeared with the ability to wield the Monado. But why would Zanza release the Monado? He surely knows it would become a double-edged sword. Yet he relinquishes it to that mere child. And the face escaped my control and acted alone. Now that the Monado has been free, it appears the usefulness of the faces has come to an end. Although, perhaps there are still things to be learnt from having them challenge the boy.